Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Diversified mining major Glencore is considering the closure of some of its coal mining operations in South Africa, potentially affecting more than a thousand employees. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer tells us more. Welcome, Martin. Uh, thanks, Shannon. What impact will the closure of Glencore's coal mines have on the industry? It has a positive impact on the industry because uh, it means that there's less coal going through and therefore if there's less coal, there's less supply. If there's less supply, it helps the price. Mm. And you're in, again, this, you're the, the, the miners are price takers, they're not price makers. <coughs> so when the price goes down, and uh, it is down at the moment, you know, struggling on around the $70 a ton mark, you know, the idea is to curtail the supply. And we saw Glencore, you know, saying to the market just before Christmas, yes, there, there is a supply issue in coal at the moment, but it's certainly not as bad as the supply issue in iron ore. Mm -hmm. And then they took steps last year to stop supply uh, from their uh, certain operations in Australia so that they would put fewer tons into the market and try and you know, help the price to lift. Now you've got a situation with Optimum Colliery, which they acquired. Mm. This was a colliery that used to be run by BH3 Billiton. There was a process of black economic empowerment and the gains, um, the, the uh, gain executives, um, their surname is Gain, <laughs> they took over this along with Mike Techie, you know, and a group of individuals. Uh, Mike is, of course, the president of the uh, of the uh, Chamber of Mines mm -hmm. at the moment and um, th they put it on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and not too long after that Glencore acquired this. So this is an acquisition by Glencore which is a coal bull. They, they, they do believe in, in coal and they've got, they're the biggest producer of seaborne coal so they're the biggest, biggest supplier of coal that's exported from countries and you normally get a premium price on that. At this point in time, people are finding that that premium is starting to disappear. So you have to try and deal with the supply, particularly if it's loss-making supply. Mm. So at, at current prices, you know, Glencore is finding it the going tough with Optimum, and it's taken this decision now to, to close the underground operations and some of the processed plants and associated services that will affect like you know, over a thousand people's jobs and the National Union of Mine Workers has just put out a statement saying you know they're a bit upset by this. It's one of the re hard realities of this mining game where you can't set prices mm -hmm. you know you've got to take the prices and when you continually running at a loss you have to stop stopping those losses so Glencore have assured everybody you know they'll go according to the letter of law uh, all the labor laws section 189 they'll definitely make sure that they adhere to that very strongly, which does give workers you know, some benefits. Mm. Uh, and I'm sure those talks are gonna go into process now. And it's not just a quick closure because you've gotta go through this process. Uh, and um, I should imagine it's begun at this stage. Which operations will be affected? So you've got you know, 10 million tons of coal a year coming out of Optimum Colliery. And they are probably gonna cut 5 million tons of that, that's what they're considering. And at the moment you get half of the 10 million exported and half sold to Eskom, which is our state-owned power utility. The portion that goes to Eskom, they want to keep supplying that from their underground sources, you know, close the open cost and some of the processing plant and associated services, and but keep supplying Eskom. So again, you know, if you look at the big uh, picture in South Africa, that is also something that is altruistic, but I'm sure hopefully profitable as well for Optimum that they actually keep supplying coal to a uh, utility that makes sure that we have this energy, which is so crucial. And coal to, to Eskom is, is such a crucial feedstock. So it, it's good to hear that to the Hendrina power station, you know, which is a tired power station, coal-fired power station, coal will continue to be um, supplied by Glencore, you know, which is listed in London, it's listed in Hong Kong, and it's also listed in Johannesburg. What sort of impact could this have on power supply 
you've mentioned they, they will keep supplying ESCOM, but will it have any impact on actual power supply? You know, I mean, you can see that ESCOM are, are not, uh, they, they're in a tough spot mm. because here the, the mines that were supplying them on the basis of coal in South Africa <coughs> being having like a split personality, you know, the lower grade coals go off to Eskom and Eskom therefore expects them at a price which is low. Mm. The mines are then supposed to make their profits and, and keep things going by exporting. Now you find the reverse here, you know, where they're continuing to supply lo locally and they might start saying, well, look, you know, we need to have a better price to keep the, the rest of this going. So it could put some sort of pressure on, on, on Eskom because a lot of these mines that supplied Eskom saw the export market as, as the main fruit and <coughs> you know, supplying Eskom is a sort of a bread and butter exercise. So that is now being challenged in a way and they need probably greater support than in the past where they could look after themselves, these mines, mm -hmm. on the export front with that market falling away. And in fact, the strategy here, the decision is to perhaps stop those exports from Optimum, but keep supplying Eskom. It might sort of um, push the realization home in South Africa that perhaps this coal price you know, could rise locally, mm -hmm. which is not going to be good news for people who consume energy like industry and ourselves. Mm -hmm. When the commodity prices increase again, as they surely will eventually, um, will they be able to reopen these mines? Well, the idea is that these mines will be put on care and maintenance. And uh, that is always an important thing to do because these are valuable assets. Mm -hmm. Prices are cyclical. You know, we've seen the coal price rise to well beyond, you know, the $100 a ton. So in those sort of circumstances, you need to keep things ticking over so that you can come back and open those up if it is economically feasible. Mm -hmm. These particular assets, uh, they're probably you know, not a dripping roast in the coal sense. Mm -hmm. They're also among the older assets. So you can see Glencore you know, coming through with new mines just opening up. Those costs are lower and probably their margins are better. Mm -hmm. But whether they'll be able to, you know, meet their local obligations of supplying like Hendrina power station without using a lot of road traffic is, is another point. So <coughs> in a way, it's, it's very good to have these tied power stations where they tie to a coal operation because it, um, it makes life easier in many respects. Because a lot of the, you, you know, the way they used to deliver the coal there was straight out of the mine you know, on a conveyor belt mm -hmm. to Eskom, which would then do you know, all the processing that they needed. Yeah. And <coughs> in recent years, some of that's changed where these coal mines are not as close to the power stations and you find them using the freeways and really damaging a lot of the road networks, which mm -hmm. isn't ideal. We need greater rail transport, but you know, we used to have coal, uh, we used to have like a cement plant down the road here, PPC cement, and they realized that you mustn't bring the raw materials to the plant because you think, oh, you've got a plant close to the urban area, therefore your logistics costs are lower. No, you know, rather build <coughs> the cement plant where your raw materials are. And it's the same with these power stations. Build them close to where your raw materials are because you don't want to have to transport, you know, large volumes of low priced items that have a high rail tariff. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the same here. So. We've got to watch the space carefully because we're so dependent on it and we can see that uh, you know, Eskim is in bad need of stability. They've got to stabilize. And these are the sort of arrangements that help that stability, including these older power stations, you know, Hendrina, which is the one affected here with optimum coal. Well, thank you very much, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Shannon. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.